Do you wish that you could be one of those public speakers who gets up in front of a room full of people and speaks effortlessly? Well, public speaking is a skill. So think about other skills in the world, like playing golf or playing tennis or being a carpenter or an electrician. In order to get really good at something, you need to learn about it, you need to practice it, and you need to get experience. So let's start. First, before we get into the tips, I want to stress it's normal and it's okay to be nervous. If you're nervous about something, it means that you care about it. It means you don't want to do a bad job. So that's okay. We all get nervous. I've been training trainers for years and I've facilitated hundreds of hours, both in the classroom and on Skype. And even I get nervous. It's actually a good thing. It means you care about the job. Okay, so here's another little tip before we get started. If you've been asked to speak in front of a room full of people and you're outside of your comfort zone, it's totally okay to tell the group of people that you normally don't talk in front of a room full of people and that you are nervous. It's totally fine. You don't need to pretend. It's okay to be a regular human being. So what if you said, hi everyone, I'm really excited to be here today. I have to admit, I don't normally talk in front of a room full of people, so I'm a little nervous today. So thank you in advance for your understanding. Imagine if you said this, there's a very high likelihood that the people in the audience are actually going to be rooting for you and they'll silently be cheering you on. So it's okay to be a little bit vulnerable. All right, so enough of my preamble. Let's get on to the first tip. One of the reasons we have anxiety is because we're nervous about the future. Okay, the future is scary. It's uncertain. We don't know what's going to happen. So, tip number one, set SMART goals. Now, what does SMART stand for? Let's take a look. It's an acronym. Let's take a look at what each letter stands for. As we can see, we've got five letters, S-M-A-R-T. Let's start with the S. S stands for specific. You want to make sure that your goal when you're public speaking is broken down into specific goals. These are smaller goals that make up a larger goal. So you don't want to have a super large goal like, I'm going to MC a wedding. That's way too big of a goal. If you're nervous about speaking at a wedding, break it down. You might have 10 smaller goals leading up to it, and then you can control those. So be specific. Next up, we have M, which is measurable. This is a really important one. Look at the example that I just used about emceeing a wedding. How do I know if I'm successful if I emcee a wedding? I, I don't know. I haven't set any measurable metric for me to tell if I'm successful or not. So break it down into 10 smaller goals and then measure the success of those goals. The A stands for attainable. You want to make sure that when you set a goal, you can actually achieve it. If the goal is too big, you're not going to be able to achieve it, and therefore it's going to be stressful. It's going to stress you out, give you anxiety. So make sure your goal is small enough that it's attainable. If the goal is too big, break that goal down into smaller goals, each one then being attainable. R stands for realistic. Don't set a massive goal, especially if you're nervous about it. Make sure that what you're setting for yourself, you can actually achieve. It's okay to stretch a little bit. It's okay to push yourself. But don't set something up that's so massive that you're doomed to failure right out of the gates. And the last one is T for a time frame or having something to do with time in the goal. You want to make sure there's a time attached to it. So if you're going to set a metric for success. Make sure there's a time attached to it. Okay, if you're going to MC a wedding, for example, coming up, if you have a public speaking event, when is it? Maybe it's 10 days from now, maybe it's 20 days from now. You can then chunk off, you know, make little chunks of time where you can then set little individual goals. So rather than just say, well, 20 days from now I'm going to MC a wedding, that's not really helping because it's too big of a goal. Make them smaller and make them specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and give yourself a specific time frame during each of them. Okay, so here's a bad example where we don't have any of these real smart goals in here. So the bad example would be, I'm going to give a speech at a wedding. I'm going to get up there and give it my best shot, and hopefully they will be kind. Okay, this is a pretty wimpy goal. Okay, it's not very specific. What do I mean by hope they will be kind? I can't, I can't measure that, so it's not specific. It's not measurable. Is this attainable? Maybe, but how do I know? 
Okay. It's not, there's nothing here. Is it realistic? Yeah. I mean, I'll give it my best shot, but what does that mean? When is this? I have no time frame attached to it. So I'm going to give a speech at a wedding. Well, which wedding? When is it? How am I going to break down practicing for it? I'm just set up to to fail at this because I don't have it broken out. It's like making a, a meal. Think of all the steps into making a meal. You might have 30 different steps in making a meal. And if you don't just say, I'm going to make spaghetti, you break it down into different little tiny goals and then you achieve each of those goals and at the end you have a great meal. So here's a better example. Tonight at 7 p.m. I'm going to practice my speech three times from start to finish and my brother will sit there and he'll critique me. Now that's measurable. It's specific. I'm, I know exactly what I'm going to do and when. It's attainable. I can practice my speech three times. I can read it. Okay, it's realistic. That's, that's doable. Maybe my speech is five minutes long. I run it through three times. It's 15 minutes. It's doable even if I have a full-time job. And I have a time frame in mind. I know when I'm going to do it. I'm held accountable. These are smart goals. And what happens as a result of these smart goals is my anxiety is lowered. I know exactly when I'm going to do it. I know exactly what I'm going to do. And I know exactly what the outcome is going to be. And as a result, my anxiety about the future is lowered. So remember, if you have a big goal, like, for example, giving a 10-minute speech in front of the executive board, okay, break down that goal into little smaller goals. Plot them out on a calendar. They're like little buckets you can fill with tasks. So you create a plan, and then you work that plan. Your anxiety will go down because you're taking action on the things you can actually control. All right, so you've got SMART goals now. Let's go on to tip number two. Tip number two, visualize your success. Pro athletes visualize their success. Pro athletes perform. And hey, so do you. As a public speaker, you're performing in front of a room full of people. So let's try something. You can close your eyes or you can just stare at the picture that we've got here. So imagine yourself standing at the podium. Okay, the room's full of people. The room has 30 people in it, 300 people in it, whatever the amount is. But just visualize it. It's a room full of people. And you're standing there in front. Now just let your mind start getting nervous. Just let it happen. Remember, you're not actually there. Okay, imagine if the audience does look unhappy. Follow it through. Go ahead, let them. Remember, this is all in your mind. It's not real. You can visualize it. Now go through the speech in your head. Okay, what's the worst that's going to happen? Are they really going to stand up and start throwing rotten fruit at you? Probably not. Are they going to silently judge you? Eh, maybe. So what? Now visualize it. Go through the speech in your head. Stand in an empty room, close your eyes, and go through the major speaking points in your head. Or read the speech, but read it in the, you know, with the lights down low so you can imagine that there's a big audience out there that you can't see. Picture it going successful in your mind. If it goes poorly, reset your mind and try it again. Eventually what will happen is you'll have practiced the speech enough that your negative scenario will start to become neutral. And then it will start to become positive. Remember, one of the reasons that you're anxious is because you haven't done this a lot. So here's another way to look at it. Imagine something you've done in your life thousands of times that you're not anxious about. So imagine, for example, tying your shoes. Okay, do you get anxious when you put your socks on in the morning or when you tie your shoes in the morning? Probably not. You don't sit there all nervous in the morning. Maybe today's the day I forgot to tie my shoes. No, you don't even think about it. You've done it thousands of times. It's automatic. Well, if you give enough speeches in your lifetime, it'll be like you're putting your socks on. It'll be like you're tying your shoes. So remember, you've done this before. And whether you've done it only in your mind or you've done it for real, it doesn't really matter as far as your brain is concerned. So build up the experience in advance. If you have to give a speech and you've never given a speech before, give the speech in your mind 10 times, 20 times, 100 times. Your anxiety will go down because you've done it in your mind a bunch of times. Okay, so now you've got SMART goals and you've got visualization. Here's tip number three, positive self-talk. For some weird reason, 
and I'm not a psychologist, so I don't know the reason for this, but we often try to motivate ourselves by thinking negatively. Maybe this comes from TV or movies, I'm not sure. But you know in the movies, the athlete is training and we think that they have to suffer on some level to get really good at boxing, for example. However, in real life, being negative doesn't actually help us very often. So remember, beating yourself up or taking it seriously by giving yourself negative self-talk. It may feel like you're accomplishing something, but you actually aren't. In fact, most accomplished and successful speakers are actually pretty forgiving of themselves. It makes them appear looser, and it makes them appear more confident. I can guarantee you that you will screw up at some point during a speech that you give. If you give a speech on a regular basis, if you're a facilitator, if you host meetings, if you stand in front of a room full of people, if you talk to other human beings, you will make a mistake. Okay, you will someday give a presentation where the technology won't work, or someone in the room is a resistance audience member. Okay, it's going to happen. And I got to tell you, it's not really that big of a deal. No one's going to remember 10 minutes later, a day later, a year later. I've seen wedding speeches, for example, where the speaker makes a mistake. Okay, so they're human. No one died. It's all good. Big deal. We did the best we could. Focus on what you did right as well as what you can improve. Celebrate your successes. Remember, there will always be somebody who's better at a certain skill than you. There's always a hockey player or a football player who's better than you. And you're better at some things than someone else. It doesn't make you a winner or a loser. It just makes us all trying to learn and all trying to do the best that we can. Tip number four is a really powerful one. It's deep breathing. This is a technique that's so easy and so simple that it's often overlooked. And I've been guilty of this too. Hey, you know who uses deep breathing? Actually, it's Navy SEALs. Okay, this is part of their core training program. So hey, if it's good enough for them, it's definitely good enough for me. The nice thing about this technique is that you can breathe deeply and slowly and not even show that you're doing it. So for example, which one of these two people is breathing really deeply? We can't tell. Okay, you can do it before your big speech. In fact, you can actually do this while you are presenting. Okay, and this actually works. Here's how. Step one, you can find a comfortable chair or you can find a couch or you can even lie down. You can also do it while you're standing or seated. Okay, but find some place that you're comfortable. Step two, inhale for four seconds. That's a long time. Let's count it. One two, three, four. Next up is step three. Hold the air in your lungs for four seconds. One, two, three, four. And then exhale nice and slow, and then repeat. The secret to this is doing it slowly and doing it deeply. I tell you this works. It lowers your anxiety, lowers your heart rate, it calms your brain down. Give it a try. It works. So there you have it. There's the four tips on how to lower your anxiety if you're going to be speaking in public. The first one, smart goals. All right, Break the larger ask, the larger task, down into smaller bite-sized chunks. Okay, It won't be so overwhelming. Maybe you break them down into 10 little chunks and then you can pick away at them and you can gain some success for your larger task. Tip two, visualize. Make sure you're like a pro athlete trying to sink that free throw or you know, shoot the basket or, or score the goal. Make sure that you're picturing in your mind what a successful speech is going to look like. Tip three, positive self-talk. I promise you, you will not get anywhere by beating yourself up. Make sure to celebrate your successes and celebrate your growth. You will get better and you deserve to get better. And then tip number four, deep breathing. This is so, so powerful. Practice it for 10 seconds, 30 seconds, maybe a full minute. It will lower your anxiety, I promise you. And if you combine these four techniques together, you will be unstoppable the next time you have to give a speech in public. I really hope you found this video helpful, and I'll be talking more about these and other concepts in future videos on this channel. So if you liked what you saw here, please subscribe, and I would really love it if you did so you'd never have to miss a video. Thanks a lot for watching.